Hi, I'm Rob Gray. I'm the Chief Commodity Strategist at Resource Capital Funds. Last month, a number of our LPs heard me say, it's time to get ready. It's time to get ready to invest in metals and mining. With the award to 21 different projects of $2.8 billion, you know, that certainly is a sign that you know, we're moving you know, past get ready. There was a really exciting development this week in the United States. The Biden administration announced that 21 different projects were to receive a total of $2.8 billion in grants and funding. And what's really interesting is we're finally starting to see some investment starting to flow. Uh, we're moving beyond the rhetoric. 2.8 is a big number, but at the same time, you know, this is less than 1% of what the Department of Energy has been recently granted you know, through the Inflation Reduction Act. So the Department of Energy, the Loans Program Office, they have four years to deploy this money. Now, four years is a, is, is a really quick period of time, um, certainly within mining timeframes. So with the 21 projects that have been announced, there are two key benefactors. The auto OEMs, who have been wondering how the supply chains were going to reach their battery factories in the United States, as well as the metals and mining sector, who want that certainty of offtake and the ability to sell their product locally over shorter distances. So with this critical midstream you know, onshore development in the United States, I mean, it's unlocking some of you know, the metals and mining development potential in the US, and it's giving the OEMs certainty around local supply of critical lithium, nickel, graphite, cobalt inputs that they need to locally construct, well, to produce battery cells in the United States, as well as take those cells and put them into packs, and eventually those packs make their way into full battery electric EVs. So what will be interesting is how will the UK, how will Australia, how will the European Union react to you know, the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States? Now, what we have here is there is a competition for scarce resources. Um, other governments um, are going to have to react to what the United States has, uh, has done. Uh, we expect to see a reaction from you know, certainly the European Union um, and equally upstream in, in Canada and Australia. The metals and minerals that are predominantly going to benefit by you know, the projects that have been sanctioned are nickel, lithium, graphite and cobalt. Now, nickel, lithium and cobalt are, are important in terms of the cathode portion of the battery. Um, and having a U.S. sourced processing supply chain is going to enable local processing, uh, which is exciting at shortening supply chains and, and allowing for domestic processing of these critical battery metals. Now with graphite, graphite goes into the anode of a battery. Um, yeah, most of the world's graphite um, is processed in China, but you know, with this grant from the Department of Energy, and into the state of Louisiana. Um, it allows for local processing of, of graphite that will enable the manufacturing of anodes, a critical supply of material, into the formation of battery cells and battery packs in the United States. It's the latent impact of what we're seeing here that's actually gonna reduce inflation in the United States over time. So as we build these projects, you know, that actually might be inflationary. But when we get to the other side and once they're built, you know, it's similar to what happened in the 1970s with the massive CapEx boom that we saw then. It's only when you get to that point of material abundance that we'll start to see inflation come down and we'll truly address some of the supply side pressures that, you know, that are frankly frustrating um, the inflation picture. Well, across the 21 projects that receive funding from the Department of Energy, one of these companies is an RCF Propoleo company, Talon Metals. Talon received a grant under the bipartisan infrastructure law that's going to enable them to kickstart the development of a nickel processing facility in the state of North Dakota. Why this is exciting is that it enables the project to you know, essentially process nickel 
in a common infrastructure facility. It even potentially um, allows for Talon to process other nickel ores and it, it's an endorsement from the Department of Energy um, that what Talon has with the nickel sulfide deposit in Minnesota um, can be developed and processed here in the United States. So from an RCF you know, perspective across our portfolio, certainly across mature funds, which has um, a diversified exposure to battery metals, uh, the, this sort of funding is going to secure off-take agreements um, and it's going to help catalyze some of the development that we're seeing. It's a dangerous time to remain on the sidelines because this is starting. Um, and it's important for everyone to realize that this is just 1% of the money that the Department of Energy has to invest over the next four years. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to um, seeing you sometime soon.